Hi there, I'm Mabel Jong, and you're watching the World Healthcare Congress Interview Zone, and I'm so pleased to have John Mackey here. He's CEO of Whole Foods Market. John, it's great to see you. It's great to see you too, Mabel. And I understand that um, next month you'll be opening something pretty cool right um, in one of your stores for employees, a clinic? Well, it won't actually be in a store. Oh. It'll be near a store. Okay. It'll be in the uh, Glendale area of, of, of the greater LA uh, marketplace. We have our regional offices there and we have several stores that are that are nearby there. So it's going to be an experiment, it's a pilot. We'll, we hope to open at least three of these clinics in the greater LA uh, region and then eventually all through the all, th all through the country. And the idea is that these we'll have a, at least one medical doctor to start and we'll have three nurse practitioner or, or I'm sorry two nurse practitioners and three wellness coaches and the okay. idea being that it'll be a, it'll be primary care it'll be 24/7 uh, in terms of, of, of access for it uh, and the idea being that we think we can help our team members be healthier and we can significantly also reduce our health care cost by by taking more control of that health medical relationship with our team with our team members and of course no one has to go to it but it'll be free or virtually free if they do come and we think that there can be money saved through developing a deeper wellness relationship with people mm -hmm. most of the money we spend on healthcare are for diseases such as heart disease stroke cancer, autoimmune diseases, diabetes, obesity, that relate mostly to lifestyle, diet and lifestyle. Yes. And we think that by entering into a more in-depth relationship with our team members, we can, we can, we can take all the, we can take the blood, we can take the blood uh, samples and we can, we can monitor people's wellness and then we can begin to coach them on making the changes in their, in their diet and lifestyle that can result in better uh, uh, objective measurements of one's health mm -hmm. and then we can track that over time and we can coach team members because no one has that authority and trust like a doctor has. So right. when you have doctors that are committed to a wellness and lifestyle and healthy eating, they have an opportunity to impact people more so than, than any other uh, profession in the United States. So. We're very excited about it, and it is an experiment, so there's no guarantees, but we do anticipate that will be good for the health of our team members. It's a win-win, good for the health of our team members. At the same time, we hope it'll, it'll reduce the company's investment in health care in the Southern California market. Do you think that team members will embrace this? Absolutely, I really do. I mean, uh, first of all, it'll be very inexpensive for them, and so that if it's, and, and once they have a relationship I mean, this is, these are going to be doctors that are going to spend more time with patients, and the idea being these will be relationship uh, uh, development. It won't be like on an assembly line of doctors got to see four, five, six people in an hour, you know, spend more time with the patients, and then they'll have the relationship with the, the nurse practitioners and the wellness coaches, and, and that can, sure, they'll, the doctor's the most expensive uh, profession in that group, professional in that group, so we need to leverage his or her time. But we do think that the team approach will enable us to uh, coach, influence, educate our team members in depth in a way that we can't do with the current. Uh, we'll be able to do better with this type of structure than we have with the current existing structure. It seems that we've been on this wellness journey uh, for quite a number of years now. Yes. Um, employers are certainly aware of the importance of engaging employees in this and being involved uh, right. in the process. Do you think that Americans are much more committed to being on the journey as well? Are they getting better about what they eat, how they take care of themselves? Uh, some are. I mean, the trend lines continue to be very poor for America. Mm -hmm. We're, if you look at the rising obesity rates, I mean, yes. there's no, we haven't leveled off yet. Mm -hmm. We're now up to 69% overweight, 36% obese. So 
the, the trend, and diabetes is, is ramping up. And so I'd have to say that as a whole, America's decline in health has not yet peaked. However, there's countervailing trend, and there's a certain percentage of the population who is becoming more and more conscious about diet and lifestyle. And so we're getting a kind of a bifurcation right. in the culture. Mm -hmm. And But I think that's how you start to make a paradigm shift. It starts on the margin with a more conscious minority, and then it works its way through the larger culture. So we're in the, it's kind of like the old paradigm has to, to play out and die before the new paradigm is, is able to, to get any traction. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. you've still got the old paradigm ascendant, but it's, it, it, it's going to peak sometime probably in this decade. Mm -hmm. And then we'll begin to see health outcomes begin to improve as people understand there isn't going to be a, a vaccination for cancer and there's not going to be a pill that, that reverses heart disease. That, mm -hmm. that this type of technological innovation is fundamentally a dead end when it comes to, to wellness. It, it might have something to say for managing uh, acute diseases, uh, but in terms of reversing uh, chronic diseases, these are caused primarily by diet and lifestyle and that's where they'll be cured. Yeah. Yes, and do you think that having cus consumers, well, we're seeing a shift in the healthcare market where we're moving from a wholesale market to more of a consumer retail driven market, putting the control more in the hands of individuals. Is that something not, that I definitely be believe that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're moving in that direction. I think we're moving in the opposite direction uh, currently so? in the United States. Well, we've now got a the government is intervening through the Affordable Care Act in, in seriously in employer health, for example. I mean, their Whole Foods' ability to uh, customize our health insurance plan for our team member base. We're not going to be allowed to do that any longer. We'll be, we'll have to insure what the government tells us to insure. So the idea of of experimentation with health care insurance, that idea is going to be less prevalent going forward due to the new laws. Mm -hmm. So will the solution be for other companies to also put clinics on their sites and, the, and put for, every, bring everything in-house? You'll see two trend lines. One is you'll see more and more employers either drop their coverage and pay the fines, or they will begin to move a higher and higher percentage of their workforce to part-time status because you don't have to insure your people if, it's, if, it's, if they work under 30 hours. That creates a huge incentive to have people work 25 hours or 29 hours, but not 30 hours, because you can save a lot of money if you don't put them over that 30-hour threshold. So that will be one trend line. The other trend line will be companies like Whole Foods Market will begin to realize we can't continue to sustain this type of increase in healthcare cost. It's, it's fundamentally not affordable. No. So I think then you'll see companies do what Whole Foods is doing, become more actively involved in wellness initiatives, begin to put clinics out there that they can provide medical care directly to their, to their uh, employees. And there will be other proactive ways to control the cost of healthcare. I, there's already lots of initiatives being created out there that gives employers a little bit more control over uh, the big expenses that end up costing a, a corporation so much money. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot of innovation uh, beginning to occur uh, on the corporate level as corporations are, are desperately trying to figure out how to solve this problem. Right. Well, the story is still unfolding. Thank it you is. so much, John. All right, Mabel. Thank you. I appreciate your time okay. very much. All right. Thank Take you. Take care. And I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks so much for watching.